Summertime in SoCal. What a beautiful place to be during the summer. But for somebody who does a lot of desert off-roading, there's not a whole lot of places out in the desert you want to be this time of year. I've recently been getting a lot of questions from people who are new to the off-road lifestyle about easy trails that they can do around Southern California, especially in the summertime. The deserts are way too hot. It's 120 degrees out there. You don't want to be caught out there with a truck, whether or not you have AC. It's just not a safe place to be out there adventuring this time of year. So on this episode of Chasing Dust, I'm gonna go over my top five favorite beginner-friendly off-road trails that you can do around Southern California in the summertime or any time of the year. So don't go anywhere. What is up YouTube, it's your pal Desert Chief here, only on driving lines, chasing dust, brought to you guys by Nitto Tire. I'm out here today in Orange County, I got the Ranger behind me. I'm gonna go hit a trail this afternoon, but I wanted to talk to you guys on my way out there about my top five favorite beginner-friendly off-road trails that you can do in Southern California. Now, as we all know, SoCal is kind of like the off-road mecca of the world. There's so many different things to do, so many different types of environments you can go off-roading in. We've got deserts, we've got mountains, we've got sand dunes, we've got all kinds of places to take your truck or SUV if you wanna do a little bit of adventuring, and they come in a wide range of different difficulties. You can go everything from a beginner, a stock vehicle, someone who's never been off-roading before can handle a trail like that, no problem, to some of the more intermediate stuff that you may need a, a mild lift, maybe some wheels and tires, and then all the way up to things that you need a full-blown rock buggy for like you'd find out at the Hammers, which is just a couple hours outside of SoCal right here in the desert. With all the diversity that you find out here on the trails in Southern California, it's kind of hard to discern which trails are the ones that are really friendly towards novice off-road enthusiasts. And this is what the point of this episode is gonna be, is to give you guys who are newer to this hobby an idea of some of the best trails that you can get to within a couple hours of driving time to be able to take your vehicle out there no matter how built or not built it is and just go out there and have a great day with the family or with your friends or just explore what our local trails have to offer. Now with that said, obviously my Ranger behind me here is a little bit overbuilt for these five trails, but I still have a ton of fun on them all the time. This truck over here has got long travel suspension, king shocks, the new Nitto Recon Grapplers. If you guys haven't checked these things out, please go take a look. They are amazing. I just got back from a thousand mile road trip all the way up to the Rubicon Trail. I was actually really surprised at how well those Recon Grapplers did on the way up. They were so quiet, so smooth. I just really, really love this tire that's on this truck right now. But if you guys haven't checked out the Recon Grappler yet, go on Nitto's website and take a look. It's pretty dang cool. But it's July in SoCal and it's already getting hot and humid here in the middle of the day. So I'm gonna hop in the truck right now and fire up the AC. And we're gonna talk about these five trails as I head to the first one that's on our list. All right. <clears throat> Kick on the AC here. All right, so our first trail on the list is Main Divide, and that's in the local Santa Ana Mountains here in Orange County. It's actually one of the first trails I ever did when I first got my off-road vehicle back in, uh, in 2010 or so is when I bought my first Tacoma. And that trail was like the local trail to my house. It was about 15, 20 minutes away. And I was super happy about finding it because it was a very easy, mild fire road that went up into the mountains. And uh, you can actually take Main Divide all the way to the very top, the very, very top of the Santa Ana Mountains, which is Santiago Peak. And that's where they have all the radio towers and stuff. But this is one of my favorite trails to take beginners on because it's not hard at all. There's a couple of sections that have some some rocks in it that are you know very easily drive uh, drivable. You can drive right over them with even like a you know a stock tire. Um, it's not very hard on a vehicle. So I will absolutely recommend all terrain tires because some of the rocks up there can get a little bit sharp for a highway terrain tire. But Main Divide is one of those awesome trails and it's actually pretty long. Um, I want to say it's somewhere close to about 20 miles. It runs along all the ridges of the Santa Ana Mountains and in, uh, inside the Cleveland National Forest. Uh, so the area is managed by the National Forest uh, Service and because of that they have fire roads up there and those are the roads that are open to the public most of the time. Sometimes they can close the gates when there's inclement weather and uh, it does snow up there in the winter time. Once in a while around here we get snow 
believe it or not, even being as hot as it is here in July, um, they will close those roads down due to snowfall. Uh, however, for majority of the time, we have great weather here in SoCal, so that trail is open. Uh, there's a few different ways to make it up there. Uh, one of the ways that you can get up there is through Maple Springs Road, which is in the town of Silverado, California, and that's uh, that's the way that I used, used to always go up, but you can also access it from Ortega Highway, um, so that's another way that you can get into it as well. I'd recommend definitely uh, bring some food and water with you because it is pretty remote, even though it is in Orange County. Uh, the cool thing is you actually get cell phone reception for most of that trail so if you do have any issues you can use your phone for most of it to text somebody or whatever it is as you drive along main divide uh, you'll have amazing views sometimes panoramic meaning the entire way around 360 degree views of both the Inland Empire and Orange County some of San Diego and I've on a clear day been able to see downtown Los Angeles from Santiago Peak so it's one of those beautiful trails that you get a lot of great scenery from uh, it's usually pretty lush up there in the ways of vegetation so it's very different from the normal desert trails that I do however it is a great place to take your friends or your family up for a day and just get away from the hustle and bustle of the city life in Orange County but that was definitely the first trail that I did here in Orange County that was very great for a beginner to get their feet wet with off-road I love this truck it's so fast for a four-cylinder all right, so trail number two takes us down to San Diego. For my San Diego peeps, you guys probably have heard of this one before. If not, you've been on it. Uh, it's very similar to our last trail that we just spoke about, which was Main Divide. Uh, it is Otai Mountain Truck Trail. So Otai Mountain Truck Trail is actually part of the Otai Open Preserve. It's similar in the way that it's a fire road that can easily be traversed by almost any stock truck or SUV. Uh, and it goes along ridges of a mountain range that flows basically from California into Mexico in that area over there. Um, it's very easy to do. You can you can do it as a total beginner. Uh, you have cell phone reception for almost the entire way of the trail. And it is somewhat of a trail system, so there are a couple of different roads that you can take up there, similar to uh, up here in the Santa Ana Mountains with Main Divide. However, the main uh, trail itself just basically goes from one end of the preserve to the other. Uh, it's very, very easily navigable. Uh, you can use your cell phone's navigation to find the roads up there they do show up on there or you can use an app like onyx off-road which is what i use for my off-road navigation so otai mountain truck trail uh is is a very popular trail down san diego it's only about 45 minutes or so from downtown san diego there's gas in the general store nearby you can get ice waters you know whatever you need to get from there before you head out for the day uh one of the things i really like about otai mountain truck trail is that it does also let you get up to the top of the radio towers and that gives you those amazing panoramic views that you also get the same as the last trail we just talked about. Uh, you can see on a clear day all the way down to Mission Bay, you know, SeaWorld, all of downtown San Diego. You can look down into Tijuana from there. So if you're in the San Diego area and you're a newer off-roader and you wanna go check out a local trail, I definitely recommend you take a look at Otai Mountain Truck Trail. And so trail number three on our list is Holcomb Valley, which is located up in Big Bear. And Holcomb Valley is actually a trail system. There's a ton of trails up in the Big Bear area, but the main drag through there is 3N16, and that is the Forest Service Road that goes right through Holcomb Valley. There are several entry points up there that you can get onto Holcomb Valley's 3N16 from. So 3N16, uh, which is Holcomb Valley Road, is a graded dirt road. It is very easy to do. You can get up there even with sometimes an RV, uh, but it does give you a lot of opportunities to explore what the trail systems in Big Bear have to offer. And most of the trails in Big Bear are pretty mild and you really wouldn't get yourself into any trouble without knowing it because the harder trails up there like uh, John Bull Trail and Gold Mountain and Holcomb Creek those are some of the more difficult trails that do require big tires, you know, lockers, a winch sometimes in some cases, and they most of them do have gatekeepers. But one of the reasons I really love the trails up in Big Bear is because it gives you a different sense of wheeling. It's nothing like, um, you know, down here in the flatlands, you're up at about seven, 8,000 feet, so you get all the pine trees, you get the meadows, the grasslands, you get 
some creeks that go through there. Of course, this is all in addition to all the other great outdoor activities that you can do in Big Bear around the lake itself. Um, taking the truck or the SUV out with the family for a day of wheeling up there is always a great time. And I love taking newbie off-roaders up there for their first time because it gives you a sense of being away from the city and really just being up in the mountains in the elements and having a great time without all the worry of like being, you know, miles and miles away from anything civilization wise you can get gas in town you can get food you can get all that stuff you can come back and have lunch in big bear lake and then go back out and do another trail for the day so it's pretty close to the actual town of big bear which is a great great benefit of the trail systems up in holcomb valley so trail number four on my list of the top five trails in socal for beginner off-roaders is burns canyon road funny enough burns canyon road actually begins or ends depending on the direction that you're headed in the Big Bear area. You can take Burns Canyon Road where it starts uh, in Big Bear, which is actually just in the, the town just east of it, which is Baldwin Lake. And that's where you pick up the trail and it actually runs down the back side of the San Bernardino Mountains and it drops you off in the desert near Joshua Tree, um, actually in a town called Pioneer Town. I really like that trail because it's one of the ways up and down the mountain from the desert to Big Bear. Um, that's unpaved. There's a couple other ways to get up and down if you want to take the dirt path versus the uh, highways that lead you up to Big Bear. But Burns Canyon is super scenic. It goes from pine trees to Joshua trees and it runs up and down the mountain. Really, really nice and easy trail. You can do it with almost any truck or SUV that's got all-terrain tires. You don't really need a lift. It's a pretty mild graded fire road, um, but it does give you fantastic scenery and a lot of really cool diversity when it comes to the things you see up there as you move from the forest ecosystem and the pine trees down to the desert where you have the Joshua trees and all the big rocks. And if you end in Pioneer Town, I might make a suggestion, go check out Pappy and Harriet's. It's one of my favorite restaurants in the area. It might even be one of my favorite restaurants in the world. One of the really, really cool hidden spots in the desert out there. So if you're gonna do this trail, I would suggest starting out in Baldwin Lake and then making your way down to the desert into Pioneer Town. And then maybe if you get there by dinner time, you can stop and have a great dinner. Maybe even see a great band over at Pappy and Harriet's. And that brings us to our fifth and final trail for this list of the best beginner off-road trails in SoCal. And this one is definitely one of my favorites. I'm talking about Cleghorn. So you guys may have heard of this trail. It's kind of uh, one of the more famous SoCal trails uh, for any level of off-roader. Cleghorn is actually also nestled in the San Bernardino Mountains, right between the San Gabriel Mountains and San Bernardino Mountains in the Cajon Pass area. So if you've ever traveled to Las Vegas or been up, up to the desert before, the Cajon Pass is the main artery that runs traffic up and down from the desert to the Inland Empire. And along it, you have a couple of really great trails and one of them is Cleghorn. Cleghorn is one of those trails that I find is very useful for testing out new equipment, um, testing out a new rig, the capabilities of a new truck that you just built or one that you just bought. And for that reason, you see a lot of people up there. There's, it's one of the more popular trails in Southern California because of so there's so much to do up there. Technically, the main trail, which is Cleghorn itself, is actually just a fire road. There's nothing really to it. It's very similar to the other four trails that I mentioned in this list. However, it does have one added benefit. Cleghorn has a ton of offshoots that range in medium to difficult to pretty much insane. You need a full built buggy, which you couldn't even take up there really uh, due to legality reasons. But the great thing about Cleghorn is that you can try out the capabilities of your rig on some of these harder lines. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a preface to this though. Some of those lines, you might be going down them thinking, oh, this isn't so bad, I can take this bypass. And then very quickly it turns into a very scary situation. If you're not prepared or if your rig's not prepared for it, you could have a really bad time up there. So if you're gonna go up to Cleghorn, you can do the main trail, it's very easy. You'll have a lot of fun up there, amazing views. You're running along a ridge the entire time, really, really green, lush greenery up there most of the year, um, except for maybe some of the fall months. But if you're gonna go up there, make sure you bring a spotter if you wanna try some of the harder trails up there because it can get a little bit dicey going down some of those bypasses. Cleghorn is also easily accessed via I-15. So if you're on Interstate 15, you actually just exit Cleghorn Road and that's where you can get off 
make make the turn there and then you can turn right into dirt and head straight up the mountain. As you make your way from west to east along Cleghorn, you'll end up down in Silverwood Lake, which is a great place for recreation. There's uh, a lot of boating out there, hiking, more off-road trails to do out there, but really Cleghorn itself is one of those gems of SoCal that we have here where we can actually go out and test some of our vehicles and get some great footage, maybe if you want to go up and just play for a little bit, play for a day. And it's within about an hour drive of most places in SoCal. So uh, if you're wanting to give your rig or yourself a little bit of a challenge and try out some of those bypasses, I suggest you check out Cleghorn if you haven't already. It's one of the more popular trails up there. So that's pretty much it, you guys. If you're a beginner off-roader and you want to check out some of the great trails that SoCal has to offer, I mean, we are in the off-road mecca of the world right here. I said it earlier and I stand by that, okay? I've been off-roading all over the country sometimes in other countries too i really really think that southern california has some of the best diversity when it comes to off-road trails and it, diversity meaning different areas and environments to off-road in as well as different difficulties from everything from a complete beginner who's never been off-road in their entire life to somebody who grew up doing this and is a fully built buggy or a jeep or something like that there's all kinds of trails out here so right now i'm on uh, santiago canyon road over here i'm about to head into silverado canyon which is the trailhead for the very first trail that we had on our list which was main divide it's one of my favorite local trails it's where i grew up off-roading and i haven't been up there in a long time and i haven't been up there in the ranger yet so i wanted to go up there and take some photos of the new recon grapplers that i got on my ranger it's definitely one of my favorite spots to get off the road and get some photos of this truck out there on these recon grapplers doing what it does best that's going to do it for me today you guys i appreciate you guys watching chasing dust of course i want to thank nitto and driving line for letting me have this show on here i love bringing it to you guys please subscribe comment share like below all of that and hit that bell icon so you guys are notified every time driving line has a new video coming out but it's already getting really hot down here so i'm gonna head up on the trail on main divide where i can go all the way to about 6,000 feet elevation it should be a whole lot cooler up there thanks again you guys i'll catch you on the next one